When you think about car brands that have some really out there designs, you maybe think about Citroen with the DS, think about Audi with the original TT and the A2, and Renault, of course, with the Velsatis and the Aventime. Well, maybe it's time to add another car brand to that list, Human Horizons. You want to see why? Check it out. Yeah, that's why. So here it is, the Hi-Fi Z, and the first car from Human Horizons, the Hi-Fi X, which you'll also find on our channel, was every bit as balmy and crazy and futuristic as this. And that means it's becoming a habit for Hi-Fi to do this. Now, I mean, you will not see any of the cars like this on the road, will you? You won't see anything like this for a long time. It looks fresh out of Cyberpunk 2077. It's so crazy, it makes the Cybertruck look ordinary. Now, of course, Hi-Fi's design language is all about dedicating loads of space, loads of real estate to lights. So we've got the same on this car. We've got graphics, graphic LEDs down here, got projectors on there, got really cool lights here across the front. If I press this button, you start to see the waves here on the daytime running lights in there. That's really cool. But what Hi-Fi have done with their second car is also bring those lights along the side here. So we've actually got digital lights in the door and you can actually project messages here in the side as well. That's really cool. This car, of course, is a sports car, a GT, which means that it comes with all kinds of aerodynamics as well. So you've got vents down the side there, you've got an active grille down here that opens up as well. You've also got vents through the front here, just like on a Lotus Electra. And we've got more at the back that we'll show you. Also, even here, this little fin on the side. Now there is a party trick, I'll show you. If we press left, left, right, right, That's cool, isn't it? The doors open, suicide style, so you can get into the back and the front, no problem. Also, the tail opens up as well. It's really, really very, very cool car. Now, let me show you the rear. Okay, so as I said, coming towards the rear, let's talk about these doors. They both open pretty much 90 degrees, which makes ingress and egress really simple, even without having the butterfly doors that we had on the Hi-Fi X. Now, I'll just close it all up for you again. And that worked first time this time, which was great. We've got here 22 inch alloys, absolutely enormous. The same size as you get on the Hi-Fi X. We also have the same 10 degree rear wheel steering as well, which gives you a turning radius of just 5.5 meters. Quite impressive for a car of this side. size. we've got here a few aerodynamics along the side, very swoopy rear. So if we come down to the back here, got a very big spoiler. So that all comes through there. And we've got an active spoiler here as well that gives you some extra stability over 80 kilometers per hour. One thing we don't have is any rear view visibility. There is no rear window there. So this camera built into the spoiler is doing all of your rear view work for the mirror. Now, as I said, they do love to have a lot of real estate for LEDs. So we've got a big piece there, we've got LEDs all across the back here as well, and some red lights around this center section here. If I press this, we do have an electric hatch and we have 316 liters of space here in the back, 684 if you put the seats down. In this one, you do get electric seat controls here inside the back, which is great. You didn't get that on the Hi-Fi X. No space under the bottom there, just your usual tools and things. So yeah, it's very cool. It's very futuristic, very unlike anything you've ever seen before. And it's also pretty cool inside as well. So let's go and check out the inside. Now, if you've seen our review of the Hi-Fi X, you might be expecting similar levels of tech extravagance in the Z, but actually it's a bit more muted than that, but equally unique. Everything starts with this 15 inch AMOLED screen in the middle. Sounds very bland, right? It's absolutely not because this screen turns up the novelty of BYD's rotating screen by a factor of 10 because this screen can swivel, tilt and dance all by itself. And they've even put a function in there to actually show us how to do it. Thank you. 
Pretty nifty, right? Maybe a bit of a gimmick, but still quite cool anyway. Now the screen is automatically tilted towards the driver as you get in the car. You'll also notice that if I move the chair, it actually moves to follow my face, which is really quite cool. And you can also talk to Hi-Fi Bot and get it to summon and look at you. If you prefer to do it manually, you just unlock it here at the bottom of the screen and you can move it by yourself manually. So that's pretty cool. Now, this is obviously on Snapdragon 8155, as you would expect, very, very quick. We have a really cool, very detailed render of the car here where you can open the doors by the angle that you want, including the back and the front. We've also got to support that a heads up display in front of us, and that will give us your, your driving information. Because you'll notice we don't actually have a screen here in front of us. So we get our driving information up there. We also get it on this strip at the top of the screen. Interestingly, these are on a different system to this. So if for whatever reason this decides to not work, you'll still be able to get all of your important driving information whilst you're driving. So what else is new? In terms of color and material choices, we do get a very diverse selection here in the car. We get some purple anodized metal on the chair. We get this very funky purple seat belt. I'm a big fan of that. We also get a sort of a TVR Tuscan purple blue metallic leather here on the inside of the steering wheel, which is also quite funky. And on the chairs here, these side parts, under the top layer of fabric is a metallic green color, which certainly looks very sci-fi, very techy, and you know a little bit glitzy. We also get leather on most of our main surfaces. So we get some soft leather up there, here on the doors, on your chairs as well. We also get some suede on the back of the chairs here, as you can see. And we get microfiber lining up there on the top and on the upper surfaces here. We get a bit of metal on the side of the dashboards. We get some gloss black plastic and we get some sort of fairly coarse metallic plastic here, which is probably the, the worst part of the car actually, sadly in one of the best places. And we also get a crystal drive selector which lights up. That's very funky, do you like that? In our Hi-Fi X video, we did complain about the capacitive touch pads on the steering wheel and they are still here on the Z, but thankfully, they've now changed because they're now more profiled so you can touch them and feel where you're pressing without having to look at the steering wheel. So that's an improvement over the X. We also get our machined paddle selectors here on the back. Of course, they're not for changing gears. They are for changing your sport mode, for example, and also you can change your brake regeneration settings in there as well. So that's quite a cool place to have those. We also get 128 color ambient lighting. You might be able to see that in the door panel there. That looks quite cool at night. It does lift the cabin and it's kind of a 3D effect behind this gloss black plastic on the sides as well, which also looks very dynamic. We get 14-way adjustability on the driver and passenger seats and heating, ventilation and massage functions in the front. We don't have an extendable base cushion, but we can tilt the angle, so at least we get something. Steering is reach and rake adjustable, but it's in the system. Sadly, it's not on a toggle on the side like it was on the X, which I preferred. We get a wireless charger, of course. We get a cup holder in here, an extra one on there, slightly awkwardly shaped cubby hole here and some more space under the dash and we get a 23 speaker meridian sound system huge metal grills down here really really brilliant sound system you'll definitely enjoy that and we get a big panoramic sunroof above our heads divided from the one at the back that's a bit bigger and that's where we're going to go now so let's go and check it out okay so climbing into the back of the hi-fi z is certainly not as easy as i made out earlier though the 90 degree doors do help a little bit of course, the problem, once the 90 degrees are do doors are open, is you can't actually reach the switch. So thankfully, they put a button on the roof here, which will close the door for you. Now, once we're inside, you'll see that it's probably quite dark. We're helped out here by the fact that we've got light colored leather on these chairs, but this roof, this enormous panoramic roof here, is actually quite dark tinted. So it does restrict some of the light getting into the back here. Once we're in, we actually have plenty of leg room not so much on the footroom side, so the front chair is quite low there, can't get my feet under there. And also the headroom, I can barely get my hand between my hair and the window. Now thankfully this window is here, otherwise it might feel a bit more claustrophobic, but you know, it's, it is pretty tight because we do have a very low roof line in here. As I said, we get all of our luxury materials, so we get a lot of leathers and soft touch materials on every surface. You'll see the ambient lighting there going around the car, that looks quite cool. Windows are fairly small, but you know, maybe you'll be looking up or down at your phone maybe as well. Now you may have noticed that my thighs are not particularly well supported by the rear bench here. I do believe 
on the four-seater version that you do get base cushion adjustment in terms of the angle. So that might help it be a bit more comfortable on a long trip, but you don't get it on the five-seater version. Actually, most people buy the four-seater version. It's not that much more expensive, and of course it does give you the added luxury. You can get a fridge in the middle here. You can also get a wine cooler if you prefer that. On the five-seater version, we get a massive armrest that you have to pull the tab, otherwise you'll be fighting to pull it down. With a little screen in here where you can control the music, you can play it, skip songs, and then go to change the volume as well. You also get three zone climate control, so you can control the climate control in here, and you can adjust the chairs. So I can click on the front seat here, the passenger chair, move that forwards and backwards and adjust the angle on that. For this, If this passenger wants a bit more space, you can also adjust the backrest on my chair as well. But no back, no, no base cushion adjustment on the five-seater version. You can also turn on our heating on these chairs. We only get heating, it seems, on the five-seater version. I thought we got heating and ventilation. Maybe the four-seater version gets both. So that's quite cool. You also get two cup holders and a pair of USB-C sockets in there. So it does feel, it feels premium, but it definitely feels compromised. The lighting is cool. The big speakers are definitely great. It looks quite funky, but you will suffer if you're particularly tall or you have massive feet because you are going to be having to slouch in your chair a little bit to get fully comfortable. But I suspect that most people who buy this car are going to want to be in that chair. So that's where we're going to go right now. Right, now the Z is every bit as much a sports car on the road as it looks because it is proper rapid and it's got incredible road holding as well. Oh, it's fantastic. It really, really just grips. It grips everywhere. It's got intelligent four-wheel drive, the same as in the X. It's got continuous damping control and it's got intelligent air suspension as well. And they're all working together really well to give this car excellent road holding. The only thing I've managed to get out of it is a little bit of understeer, but even under full throttle, it is just, argh, it's just hanging on. It's brilliant, fantastic to drive. Now it comes with an insane amount of power as well, more than the X had. Twin, 247 kilowatt motors, that's 662 horsepower, and the same 820 newton meters of torque as you got in the X. It will do zero to 60, or zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.8 seconds. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you what it feels like. So I'm gonna pop this into sport mode. That's the right one, and here we go. Ah! <laughs> definitely more aggressive than it was in the X. It's slightly faster than in the X, but it shoves you right in the backside. It's, I don't know, it's, it's thrilling actually, absolutely thrilling. And these chairs feel really well suited to it actually. They just, they just hold you, they're excellent. It's absolutely a sports car and very much has the same momentum, the feeling of momentum and smoothness. And I don't know, it just, it just surges along, wafts along. Almost every part of the touch points are all really, really, I don't know, just geared towards a very premium, very leisurely driving experience. The only thing that isn't is when you get right down to the very slow speeds. If you're in traffic and you're just kind of, just on the throttle a little tiny bit or not, actually you can pinch the brakes just right at the end. They just pinch a little bit. And that's just, I don't know, just slightly not quite as fluent as the rest of the experience, but they are Brembo four pots. So as fast as it will go to start, it will also go to stop and it's very 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 aggressive actually brilliant really really fa fantastic car the performance is just astronomical now it comes with a 120 kilowatt hour battery that is 20 percent bigger than that in the x that is good for 705 kilometers on the cltc range that's the more generous one it will do 655 kilometers of cltc range in the with, with the the sporty tires that you can get that clearly sap some of that range out of the way that battery because it's bigger will take 55 minutes to charge from zero to 80 percent it will work on a dc fast charger up to 350 amps now in terms of dimensions as i said before it's just over five meters long it's over two meters wide it is one just over 1.4 meters tall and has the same 3.15 meter wheelbase as you get on the x so it's very much a big boy in terms of size, but I would say, I don't know, that rear wheel steering, it does help. I think it's got a tighter turning circle on the X that did feel slightly smaller than this, but it's definitely beneficial having it on there. And now overall driving experience, it's, it's very smooth, very smooth, very quiet. I think we have double glazing here on the front windows. So it's very, very quiet on the move. And yeah, I don't know. It just feels, it just feels premium. 
I think the best part of Hi-Fi is honestly all the gimmicks, all the technology, all the cool things like that. The best part, honestly, is the driving experience. They do feel really, really enjoyable, very sort of premium to get behind. Not on the price in front, it is an expensive car, but in the same ballpark as the X, you can get the five seat version that we have at 610,000 RMB. Currency translations are below. And for an extra 20,000 RMB, you will get the four seat version, which is obviously slightly more luxurious, but therefore slightly less practical as well. And again, currency conversions below on the screen. So I would say it's probably worth it actually, simply because I don't know if there's anything else out there that performs like this. Definitely nothing that looks like this. If you like your cars crazy as hell with performance to match, <laughs> you probably you probably don't have much more choice than the Hi-Fi Z. It's brilliant, really good steer. Very much enjoyed driving it. Okay, so that's it for our time with the Hi-Fi Z. Absolutely brilliant car, I love it. It's super premium, it's super high performance. It's really sort of ostentatious and glitzy and glamorous and futuristic and all those crazy things. I think it's worth every penny. We've enjoyed it a lot. You can see it's already gone dark outside, so we're doing this outro really late but this is when it really comes alive with all these funky lights all over the place. It's a really, really awesome car. Definitely recommend it if you want a car that is out there and is just crazy and super quick at the same time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and we'll see you next time.